In early 2022, Elizabeth Holmes was found guilty on four counts of defrauding investors. Holmes was thought to be the mastermind behind game-changing medical technology. However, what started out as promising innovation turned out to be lies and deception. Holmes faces up to 20 years in jail. Holmes's company Theranos attracted many investors and close to 9 billion US dollars in funding. Theranos promised to be a leader in medical technology, but those promises were nothing but lies and deceit. Theranos managed to bamboozle social heavyweights like media magnate Rupert Murdoch and former U.S. Secretary of State George Shultz. Both invested in the company. Former U.S. President Barack Obama even named Holmes a presidential ambassador for global entrepreneurship back in 2015. It's safe to say that the story of Theranos shook the world. In the same vein, Tsai Ing-wen also continues to defraud people using a fake PhD that she never received. Her ruse has gone on for 37 years now. We're now in the UK courts ready to expose her. Our investigation into Tsai's fraud has revealed much, from the University of London's involvement to an anonymous donation earmarked for conspirators, to political and judicial manipulation back in Taiwan. Journalists attempting to expose Tsai are closely monitored and watched by her people. Just like how Elizabeth Holmes' story has been turned into a TV drama, Thesisgate tells a story that is also worth turning into a TV show. Thesisgate investigators have been after the truth for three years now. During that time, Tsai and her people have been conditioning her supporters into blindly following her lead. Even so, Tsai can't alter the fact that a proper PhD thesis does not exist for her. Tsai is running out of options. Her inevitable downfall will take countless implicated government officials with her. Taiwan's revolution begins when Tsai is placed behind bars. Michael Richardson's case against the ICO will soon have a virtual hearing in the UK. The case threatens to expose the truth behind its highs viva examiners. In the hearing, investigators will expose the University of London's protection of Tsai Ing-wen and the faults with an earlier ICO ruling. Judge Mark West will hear the case. No matter what he or other officials decide, merely bringing the case to court is sure to draw attention to Tsai's fraud. Shortly after news of Richardson's hearing broke, Taiwan's courts started to mobilize after half a year of silence. Dr. Peng's case alleging that Tsai's thesis doesn't exist will go to trial on June 10, 2022. Court documents show that presiding judge Zhang Yonghui wants to close the case as quickly as possible. Zhang Yonghui did the same thing before. She closed Dr. Peng's initial case without so much as asking Tsai Ing-wen for her plea. Zhang ruled in Tsai's favor on January 15, 2020. In subsequent court trials, lawyer Li Zhenghua warned against such negligent behavior. Judge Zhang, however, ignored Li's warnings. That prompted Dr. Peng to sue Judge Zhang. Dr. Peng's case against Judge Zhang is currently undergoing appeal. Dr. Peng suing Judge Zhang gave the judge a perfect opportunity to recuse herself from the controversial case. However, she insisted on handling the case, even chastising Dr. Peng many times. It's clear that Judge Zhang is receiving directions from someone higher up.
This time around, it seems the courts want to play fast and loose with legal procedure. Instead of holding a pretrial hearing, the courts want to jump directly into debates. The courts also said that if either party can't make it to the court date, then the judge will issue a default judgment. It's clear that Judge Tsang has already made up her mind about how she's going to handle the case at hand. She wants to hand Dr. Pang a loss, counting on the fact that he will not make it to court. It's clear that the Taipei District Court is attempting to carry out a political hit job. It will go to any length to fulfill its mission, even if it means contradicting itself. For example, Judge Zhang Yonghui should have recused herself after the High Court threw the case back to the district level. If a case that's ordered to be retried sees the same judge, what's the point? How could Judge Zhang know where she made mistakes the first time she heard the case? The case should have drawn a new judge entirely. However, when Dr. Pang's legal team sent a letter requesting Zhang's recusal, this is what the Taipei District Court said. This case, filed on January 15, 2020, is a simple matter of proving fact. There is no legal interpretation required. There would be no problem with the judge's ability to preside over the case. The original judge will stay on the case. Taipei District Court allowed Judge Zhang to stay on, saying that the case will garner a procedural ruling. However, in Zhang's prior ruling, she wrote that the defense also requested a ruling for whether or not the defendant received a PhD. This was not the case. Judge Zhang put her own subjective opinions in the ruling. How could Zhang's behavior constitute anything remotely procedural? The district court document denying recusal didn't so much have a signature on it. No one wanted to take responsibility for such outrageous claims. In another case, Dr. Peng is suing Judge Zhang Yonghui. The judge on that case, Hong Wenhui, wrote in her ruling that Judge Zhang was protected under immunity clauses for judges. Hong said Zhang's protections were valid because Zhang made a rational ruling based on the evidence she was given. However, Hong's ruling shows that Zhang's decision was not procedural in nature. If Zhang had to come to a rational ruling based on evidence, that means legal interpretation was involved, as is the case for the immunity clause cited. It's strange. Why is the nature of Zhang's ruling twisted to better fit her needs? When the recusal request was appealed to the High Court, the High Court ruled that Zhang did not need to recuse herself because The High Court did not have proper jurisdiction to force a judge from a different level to recuse themselves.
Allowing Judge Zhang to hear this case again is an error of jurisprudence. But the High Court went ahead and categorized Dr. Pang's legal team's complaints and request for Judge Zhang's recusal as a separate case. If something is wrong, it needs to be rectified, not turned into a court case. The High Court then said, The judge selection process is done in a fair and impartial manner that is used to prevent bias. The recusal request is not grounded in legality but rather courtesy. Legality and courtesy are two different matters, which the applicants have confused. The court does not see a need for immediate recusal. Unhappy with this answer, lawyer Li Zhenghua took to Facebook to say, The Taipei District Court is the one that can't seem to straighten out case distribution and recusal procedure, and it still has the nerve to say that I'm the one that's confused? For now, I will suspend my recusal request. However, I will apply to have this case redistributed on the grounds that Judge Zhang has no right to rule over it a second time. Redistribution and judge recusal, I'll use both of these avenues as I am in my right to do so. If a judicial system cannot uphold justice, does that mean it's time for the people to revolt? What kind of political pressure is at play here? Why do authorities insist on having Judge Zhang hear this case? What compels justice administrators to turn a blind eye to such flagrant administrative mishandling? This isn't the first time the Taipei District Courts have taken thesis gate investigators for a spin. Political interference has been a regular occurrence throughout thesis gate. During Dr. Peng's case against Xavier Chang, Judge Zhou Yuxuan dared to request evidence from the University of London. But the foreign ministry quickly shot that down, saying Taiwan and the UK do not have the appropriate agreements to request evidence from each other. Shortly after, Judge Zhuo was quickly switched out for another judge. Judge Zhuo was placed on parental leave for a year and a half. Then suddenly, the case against Xavier Chang drew Judge Tsai Yuxuan as Zhuo's replacement. The manipulation of the court system is clear as day here. As Tsai's validity as a suitable replacement for Zhuo came into question, the Taipei District Court once again replaced Tsai with Judge Li Xiaofen. The replacement of Tsai with Li may as well have been an admission of guilt that the court was playing by someone else's rules. However, there is no limit to what the other side will do to get what it wants. In Tsai Ing-wen's libel case against Dr. Dennis Pang, we see that everyone from the prosecutors to the judges are all agents of Tsai. This cabal of conspirators successfully got a warrant issued for Dr. Pang's arrest. Prosecutor Huang Wei's appointment to handle Tsai Ing-wen's case was just that, an appointment by Tsai herself. It's not uncommon for prosecutors to be given assignments based on political preferences. Huang's superior, Xing Taizhou, attested as much during a legislative hearing.
我刚好提到，我们一般有专组了哈，对专组嘛，你刚才说到智慧财产权等等的问题，有证照的问题了哈。OK， 所以我们大概基本上这些案件呢、啊，都会分给这些比较专呃专组或是有。专业执照的检察官来办的、啊，对，专、啊、主有专业的部分嘛。好，那我想请教一下检察长，就是说，呃，妨害名誉这样的案件的时候，会指定分案吗？我们还有特殊案件，哈、哦，特殊案件的话，这个或者比较社会瞩目的案件，我们有的也会。也会分给好，因为我在想说，在你的经验当中的时候，我就是妨害名誉指定分案的情况高吗？有多少这样的案子？当然，我们一般妨害名誉的案件，因为它刑责不重了、啊、哈。对，轻案嘛。指定案件的是不多了，不过，如果是特殊的案件或者是社会损案件，还是会的。是，那讲讲，我这边就想问一个，就是说，因为在蔡英文三告三位学者妨碍名誉案件的时候，我还学者反告他诬告的案件，好，那当时的时候，您是直接指定分案给浩谷的黄检察官了哈，因为原本是用。丙章去盖的话，要改成甲甲章去盖。好、哦，那本席不太理解，是说为什么在这案件当中的时候，你要用那个指定分案的方式去处理？这个，当这个我们甲章、乙章啊、哦，因为是相约的哈、哦，都是都是授权章啦。不过哦，这个案子会分给这个浩谷检察官的原因，是因为这涉及到。国家元首哈、哦，所以我们找的是黑金组的检察官来承办的，也是这个黑金。这里该讲特别的情况，特别的案件，对不对哈？那、啊、不过我在想说，像这样子的一个指定分案状态，而且是一是轻罪，你刚才也特别讲到轻罪的状态，还指定分案说，其实很容易会造成民众观感不佳，而且我觉得自己好像被呃减掉的高层针对了哈、哦，所以这可能也不是一件特别好的事情哈。哦 Why would a libel case ever need a specialized prosecutor to handle it? Are other prosecutors incapable of doing so, or are the other prosecutors not as willing to play ball? Even Xing said himself, "Thesisgate is a high-profile case involving a head of state. It's bound to draw a lot of attention. That's why they threw a financial crimes prosecutor on the case." However, once this particular case made it to the courts, Taipei District Court refused to treat it as a high-profile case. The courts rejected defense lawyers' requests to have a panel of three judges. Instead, they allowed morally questionable Judge Yao Nianci to continue presiding over the case alone. The courts were so afraid of summoning Tsai Ing-wen as a witness that they stalled procedures and issued an arrest warrant for Dr. Pang in hopes of putting a lid on this whole thing. High-profile cases should be identified the moment they're filed. That's not the case here, however. Justice officials seem to switch between the two categories to better fit their needs at the time. Courts are supposed to protect the people and uphold human rights. Yet, as we see here, Taipei District Court is doing the opposite. What can we expect going into the June 10th, 2022 case against Judge Zhang Yonghui? The failures of the Taipei District Court will be documented in our new book. The book will serve as an eternal record of how the court failed the people. Every official who has played a role in covering up Thesisgate will be brought to justice by our hand. So, what is the significance of our case in Taiwan getting a hearing scheduled so close to our tribunal hearing in the UK? Since our defeat in Taiwan's district court on January 15, 2020, much new evidence has come to light. That, of course, includes the University of London's statement on the missing thesis published on February 2, 2022. This is what the wrongdoers are worried about. The statement is just one of many problematic areas. There are other issues with recently divulged information, including. One, changing Tsai Ing-wen's date of award from March 14, 1984, to February 1984. Two, making the date of award earlier than the previous thesis publication date. Three, 
Even though LSE says that Tsai's thesis was sent to University of London and IALS libraries, neither library has said they ever held copies of the thesis. 4. University of London claiming that Tsai's PhD award remains unchanged despite the thesis being missing. However, school policy in 1984 explicitly states that for a PhD to be awarded, a thesis must be submitted and sent to libraries. Judge Zhang wants to use this opportunity to grant Tsai a swift victory in court. But if Zhang took the time to familiarize herself with the University of London's file dumps, she would know that the school libraries never received a copy of Tsai's thesis back in 1984. She'd learn that schools spent one and a half years following up with Tsai's educators to find a thesis. All of the evidence shows that a thesis never existed. There is only one course of action for Tsai Ing-wen's group and their conspirators in London if they are to keep up this charade. They'll need to convince people that Tsai did not have to submit a thesis to the library when she was a student 35 years ago. Then they can just put the rest of the blame on the examiners who lost Tsai's thesis. The University of London put Tsai in a corner when it said, while it remains unclear whether copies were deposited with the university's library, that has no bearing on Dr. Tsai's PhD, which was correctly awarded. This 有一些要问的问题 we don't come to our current conclusion lightly. In 2020, Dr. Pang requested a copy of the University of London's regulations for internal students. He wanted to find out just how different things were for Tsai. Dr. Pang requested school rules for the 1982 to 1983 and 1983 to 1984 academic years. He wanted to see if the rules clearly stated that theses had to be sent to libraries before degrees were awarded. Kevin Haynes provided school rules for the 1980 to 1981, 1981 to 1982, and 1982 to 1983 academic years. He did not provide Dr. Pang's school rules for the most crucial year, 1983 to 1984. On January 28, 2022, one Philip Huang asked the following question on whatdotheyknow.com. Please let me know if the University of London in 1984 required every PhD candidate to proofread his or her dissertation before submitting it to the three libraries. The University of London has long shrugged off investigators' inquiries. However, Philip Huang relentlessly persisted in submitting his question, reiterating that his inquiry did not have anything to do with personal information. University of London Information Governance Officer Emily Brick finally responded to Huang's question three months later, providing him a copy of the school rules for the 1983 to 1984 school year. Investigators thought they made a break in the case at this point, but the strange thing is that many relevant pages are missing. Page 1513 begins talking about PhD candidate regulations. However, 1513 skips to page 1525. Pages 1514 to 1524 are missing. Why is that?
Did Emily Brick upload an altered copy of the school rules to whatdotheyknow.com? If so, then it seems like her actions were completely deliberate and flagrantly trying to dodge the central issue. Can the University of London truly claim it's not covering for Ty? Thesisgate will see final judgment soon. Now that the University of London is concealing evidence, they are obstructing justice. Even if the Taipei District Courts want to keep distorting the truth, they must realize their days are numbered. This international scandal is no longer a matter of how low Taiwan's authorities are willing to go. It's now a test of the people's collective will. Let us keep recording history and see Tsai's scandal all the way through to its very last step.